Um, welcome, everyone. Um, we are very happy to have um, Marie Kjellberg and Carolina Halbecken from Scania as guests today. And they are going to talk uh, about when Agile meets um, Lean, which I think is an interesting topic for many, many. So I will just hand over the world to you. Thank you very much, Ingela. And before we start, I just want to say that we will leave room for questions after our presentation. So if you have questions, you can write them in the chat or just wait to, to we are till, until we have presented. Uh, and also want to say that uh, this is a bit of a new material. We will not give any answer on what Lean and Agile is. This is from the Scania perspective. So it will not be a facet, but I hope it will be some kind of inspiration for you. Uh, or that's the ambition. So welcome everyone. 130 years ago, a company was founded and started to create uh, bicycles and railroads carriages. And as new technologies emerged, the company transformed and started to make car, trucks and buses. And in 1940, we la launched a diesel engine with direct fuel injun injunction, injunction. Uh, and this increased the fuel efficiency with 25%. In the 1980s, a fully modular truck range combined with economy of scale and with customization for customer needs was released. And this was the Scania modular system. The system was a result of years of hard work and research, developed and refined in the, since the 1960s. And this has become one of our most important success factors. We can, from a limited number of main components, we can create the almost unlimitless number of vehicles and engine variants to meet our customers' special needs. And the story continued. Uh, in the 1990, the first step towards something called the Scania Way was taken, and we founded our house. The house was inspired by the Toyota way and the lean principles with focus on core values, enabling people and continuously improvements. The Scania way journey continued and today we are working towards science-based climate targets and wants to be a sustainable transport provider. But we are also facing new challenges like new business models for transports and also work in a much more disruptive environment than before. And I am Carolina Halbecken and work as an engineering manager at Scania with sales and services tools for our users. Hello everyone and I am Marie Kjellberg. Uh, I'm an Agile People Coach. Uh, at Scania and uh, work with the Agile transformation and the Agile uh, people concept for trainings and coaching. Yes. So, uh, when Agile meets Lean at Scania, magic happens. So this is our topic for today and this is what we are going to talk about. Um, and as Carolina said, uh, we are facing societal and sustainable uh, uh, challenges never seen before and in a pace never expected. Um, and when coming from a long background of designing and creating our organizations uh, to optimize and streamline what we already is doing uh, and constantly refining our products and processes, uh, with with working with this really successful way of lean, uh, then it's a real challenge to actually uh, to do these kind of changes to be able to adapt to uh, this complex environment. And because of the structures we have built into the organization uh, and design, we have decided to measure uh, and follow up everything we do um, and the processes are designed to do it as quick quickly as possible. Uh, so starting to adopt to a more complex environment uh, where everything is connected and where cause and effect um, is no more and where change is constant, it requires a lot of bravery and a lot of challenging discuss, uh, decisions. 
Uh, so how do we incorporate a new way of thinking and acting in this system? Uh, well, combining lean and continuous improvement, which is in our Scania DNA, uh, with com complexity and adaptability and new more agile ways of thinking is a balancing act. But when getting it right, uh, it's, a, it's a match <laughs> made in heaven. Because uh, knowing when to bring out uh, the different tools and methods uh, is the trick here, knowing when to, to uh, work with what. Um, and these are actually some challenges that we think that many companies are standing in front uh, of today. And uh, uh, we are going to talk about our journey here. So, uh, some of the challenges um, we have uh, being on our great mission, uh, going from building premium trucks, buses and engines to drive the shift towards a sustainable transport solution. Uh, we have these three transport technologies um, with, that we need to develop uh, and do it in a really sustainable way. Um, so uh, we have the uh, electrification, autonomous, and connected that we are going to need to be really good at. Uh, so this is how we have done uh, to embark this journey. So to be this, um, uh, to be this um, um, company that drives the shift, not only only uh, is good at it, but we are supposed to drive the shift. Uh, that's our mission uh, towards a sustainable trans transport system and creating a world of mobility that is better for business, society, uh, and the environment. We need to strengthen these four capabilities. Um, and by doing this, uh, we think we can reach even further into the future. So speed and flexibility, uh, they, this is something that we have um, been good at, I think, uh, from the beginning. Uh, but now we also need to be even more adaptable uh, with the solutions that we uh, create. Uh, and we also uh, need to be much faster reacting to change. Uh, in this complex new settings. Uh, develop and deliver solutions. Uh, it's something we, of course, do uh, with the Lean concept really, really successful today. Um, but we have to do it more close to the customer. We have to know the customer even more. And the customer collaboration will be core in this, uh, this new way of working. So working together, uh, and creating common solutions uh, is something that we really uh, value here. And doing this together with the, uh, the people at Scania uh, and keep this uh, engagement uh, and make this inspiring and empower the people to be able to uh, drive the shift um, will also be something that uh, we focus on, of course. And if we go down to the uh, IT part where we work, uh, Carolina and me, uh, this is the, uh, the things that we have um, created for, uh, these OKRs we have created for actually driving the shift and being the part uh, uh, of Scania um, that could actually drive the shift by utilizing the power of software and data in all areas. Uh, so we have created five focus areas uh, and an OKR wheel, uh, we call this. Um, and this is what we think will support us and um, uh, take us in the right direction. So we have the premium experience. We have awesome teams, data-driven Scania, modern digital ecosystem, operational excellence. And these five focus areas, we will go through and break down a little bit uh, for you to see how we work uh, with them. So, yes. 
Men det är för så att vi combine both lean and agile depending on, on the need. Mm. Mm. So, yes. premium experience. Well, we want to have as well as our customer has a premium experience using our products or trucks or engines or any transport solution that we provide. We also want to have that within our IT services. Uh, so what we have focused a lot on is to uh, really increase the digital workplace for everyone, not only our employees, but also our, our workshop um, employees or, or our mechanics or, or the people working with at the order office, for example. Uh, so that has been a really big journey. And we have also implemented uh, service design as a tool or also method. Uh, when working with new kind of um, services or any challenge that we are facing. And I think here is like the focus is to maybe have the premium experience, but also look at the outcome, like what is the value that we want to create when having a premium experience. And I think um, the challenge is here that we can Oh, when having only lean, we know the future and we can predict a lot what the customer needs, but having a disruptive world, we need to more collaborate with different stakeholders within the transport industry to find out like what, what will the need be. And I think that can be the difference when, when looking at our intelligence and being strong at predicting and knowing, but now when we don't know and how do we collaborate to create value. I think that's really like the challenge within the premium experience. And uh, looking again, we have our house. Uh, we have uh, the foundation for us uh, with our core values, the customer first, respect for the individual, elimination of waste, integrity, determination and team spirit. Uh, and then also, of course, we should have principles right from me and demand driven output uh, together with the priorities and over that we have continuously improvements. Whoops. Um, and if you see in the middle of the house, we have something called normal situation and that's something that we have worked a lot with and working at Scania, we talk a lot with about what is the normal situation. And how do we handle that? And what are our basic when we work so we can know if we improve? And that we have worked a long, long time with and we are, oh, maybe I'm a bit biased now, but I think we are really good at that in improving our normal situation. But what happens if we constantly need to challenge our normal situation and really don't know what the normal situation is? And I think we have tried to have this perspective then. So when having the normal situation, we are on the right hand side where we have production and we can improve our efficiency and having uh, so things predictive. So we can plan and define the activities, but also know when they are end ending or when they are completed. And here we can really take, uh, take use our backbone with the lean, lean perspective to identify value, map the value flow, create the flow, and then establish the pool to get some value uh, according to the customer needs. But looking at the left-hand side then, what if we don't know, we can't predict and we need to manage the uncertainty, what do we do then? Well, we can start with like, setting up some goals but then try them out so i think the journey will be more empirical than maybe predictive and then end when we think we have reached our goals goals and here we can use tools as lean startup if we are uh, testing things out that we think are new to the world like an disruptive innovation uh, if we test things that are new to us, but maybe not new to the world, we can use uh, the Agile toolbox with Scrum, for example. Uh, and we can also, if we meet in the middle there, we can use Kanban. And Kanban uh, and like daily stand-ups and working with improvements, that's a lot of the similarities that we already have from Lean. So when we did our Agile journey, it was not that a big step when setting the methods for, for being agile, since we have the lean intelligence. 
Uh, but then, so we can lean on lean when things are clear and a bit predictive. But when things are getting more complex, we need to open the agile toolbox to see how we can iterate uh, solutions and also uh, ideas. And in the middle here, we can have what a lot of our engineers like, and also maybe when working with hardware, when things are complicated and you can actually solve them, you don't need to adapt, you can just solve. And I think that's the most important. So on the right hand side, things are uh, possible to solve, but looking at the left side, when things are more complex, you need to adapt and adjust. You can't solve things, you just need to follow that. And I think that's something that we struggle with sometimes, but our uh, establishing tools so we can, can uh, be better at that. And then, of course, we have chaos, but that uh, we all have lived through now, I think, during the pandemic. And if you are good on the other things, I think you can manage chaos as well, quite good. Or if you're really motivated, like people in Ukraine right now, I think they struggle a lot with the chaos, but have the motivation to conquer that. <clears throat> and then tools for, or <laughs> tools or foundations for, for managing uncertainty is design thinking and service design, but also DevOps is really important. And then on the right hand side, we have the continuously uh, delivery. Uh, and then we have tried to put this together in our organization. So we have something called value creation teams, and that's a team of team that deliver uh, value uh, and then use this basics to be able to handle e uncertainty or efficiency. Uh, and I just want to show this picture, it's my favorite picture, but what is really order and what is chaos? If you go out to the nature, you will not have structured lines and things uh, sorted. Everything will be dynamic and a mix of everything. Uh, and I think that's also a way of working when having this um, complex uh, environment to handle. So, so have the, what is really order for us, but I think the human brain uh, prefer the chaos side where it's in lines and you have, have things structured. But, but I think uh, uh, adapt your mind more to nature and see what is really order and how can we be dynamic and take help from each other to grow. Uh, great, next OCR. Yes, awesome teams. Uh, I'm not sure if we mentioned that in the beginning, but uh, uh, some of these um, things that we do are on a, on a high Scania level and some are, are of course, uh, in, in smaller uh, parts of the organization. Uh, just to mention that Scania is, uh, we are 54,000 um, people working here. Um, so it's a really big company and we are situated in over 100, 100 countries. So uh, the scaling here is quite important to understand also that we do things in all different uh, kind of um, areas. And at IT where we work, we are uh, 1200 persons. So uh, it is a big company. And, and uh, so we scale, uh, uh, we scale um, all the solutions that we have, of course. Okay, so, but we can't do this uh, without uh, uh, committed employees and engagement. And uh, that's why awesome teams are so important. Uh, we need to have the uh, teams in place uh, to create this team-based organization that could can create value. And uh, we have a desired state that is servant leaders and teams shape an attractive environment uh, that engage and develop people to become awesome. And we also state that we have, that we want a great place to work. Uh, so this uh, we do together. Uh, we are um, when we are servant leaders that have servant leaders that inspire and grow people. We are T-shaped. We experiment and learn together. Um, we have a psychological safe environment. Um, 
and that the prerequisites are known by everyone, the possibilities uh, with software and, and data, and also the uh, constraints we have uh, around the team uh, and the enablers as well. Uh, we work really close uh, together with um, the business and uh, in many cases we also sit together or we are co-located so we work really close together and we are also uh, uh, organized in the way that we could um, that we could help each other out and sit together and work really really close and col collaborating um, all the time and uh, um, yes so um, just to have um, um, a little go through about the servant leadership concept, which we have at IT, um, we are we have um, uh, a manifesto that we have been working with uh, for a time. We have some KRs that we follow up, um, and we want the uh, the leaders or the teams. Uh, to have these kinds of mindsets, um, uh, developing people, uh, set the direction, but let the team work, um, remove impediments, uh, coach to self-leadership, which is really important as well in, in uh, to building these kinds of teams uh, that we need, uh, continuous learning, um, and let go of control. And we have had, of course, some challenges um, in, in creating these kinds of environments for um, teams to grow. Um, but uh, this has helped a lot with this a servant leadership manifesto, uh, and which is seven different steps or seven different areas that we want to improve. Uh, we also have the Scania leadership model, you see it, um, where we have the vision and strategy, people and team and system and flow, which is uh, things that we need to align with. Uh, these are the uh, three, th three areas uh, that needs to um, be together. They need to be in balance. Um, so these we also have aligned with the servant leadership. Um, and this is a good foundation for working with leadership as well. And at our manifesto, we have in the in the vision uh, that you should dare to be leader who shapes new leaders. And you can also see the um, in this servant leadership manifesto. I don't know if you can point, Carolina, uh, but uh, you have the triangles where you see that uh, we think that we need to change the yeah. Uh, the triangles in the servant leadership, where we need to change the uh, hierarchy in the organization and flatten it so we can have the decisions not uh, in the top, but we, we need the decisions uh, from everyone, uh, a lot of people in the top uh, to take decisions. So we need to have this um, way of thinking that everyone should be able to take their own decisions uh, where they are and for the people who who knows best. Okay, and then uh, the team, uh, the team-based organization. Um, we have the uh, um, uh, teams that uh, we will build for and uh, for high autonomy, of course. Um, and the, um, we need a collaboration. Uh, um, to get, so they can work together, uh, that's key. Uh, we have different uh, things uh, that we work with, communities of practice, uh, learning labs, big room plannings and so on, so people can uh, collaborate and meet. Um, and then also create constant learning loops uh, to create this learning organization and uh, also having fun. and. Some of the challenges that we had here was uh, going from this specialist organization when, where there's a lot of handoffs uh, and with a delivery focus uh, and, and turning this around to a team-based organization with um, focus on value creation. Uh, um, uh, and then we, we 
we recognize that to be able to work closer together to the business um, and also sit together uh, sometimes was really crucial. And, um, and then this collaboration was, was key uh, for us uh, to reach this autonomy. Yes. And this is another one of the uh, focus area, data-driven Scania. So having the uh, access to the right data uh, at your fingertips, uh, just to be able to take the right decisions um, is really crucial here. Uh, and to be able to have this uh, data lake where we can collect all the data and be able to take the right decisions. Uh, and also have this as a self-service. Today, we have a lot of uh, different systems that is not connected to the data lake, but we are getting there. Uh, and this will be an, a really, really big uh, change for us when we can have everything gathered um, so we can have the right, um, can take the right decisions when we, uh, when we should. You want to add something, Carolina? Yes, and connect to that. I think what we are used to is that uh, from our lean perspective, we are used to measuring what we do. Mm -hmm. We are used to follow up what we do. Uh, but I think the difference here is that we work much more with uh, adapting to the change that the data provides us. So we don't measure, we more uh, look at the data and see how do we need to adapt according to the data and, and the changes that are happening. So it's not, the control is much less than we have had before uh, or the feeling of control. But I think that's like the dif difference in being data driven is that you look at the data, but also adapt to, to the changes that the data um, imply. Mm. So I think that's really important um, to be data driven instead for measuring things. <clears throat> Yes, uh, modern digital ecosystem. Uh, since we are a very big company, maybe this is not uh, OKR for startups or, <laughs> or other smaller companies, but we are struggling a lot with having different platforms and a lot of old IT systems. Uh, but we want to serve as a mod modern IT platform where we have automation, prototyping and rapid delivery. That's the direction that we want to have for our deliveries, but, but uh, it is a bit tough. Uh, I have an application that has uh, a lot of Visual Basic code and is over 15 years old. So uh, transforming that, uh, it doesn't give us uh, any rapid delivery if we continue to have that. So the ambition with the modern digital ecosystem is to have modern architecture, we continuously evaluate new technology and replace the old technology. We also want to have like a data transaction backbone so we don't so we don't have the same data in different places and also use a commodity uh, when when we don't need to customize but of course we are Scania so everything is a bit special according to us ourselves uh, and then of course we should be cl cloud native to increase the speed and flexibility uh, and I think this is also connected a lot to Agile because what we see is that we have had a lot of um, uh, application, uh, applications, but now we need to think uh, as, it, as an ecosystem because everything is connected. And we also need to, like the pace of changes is so much higher than it was before. So, so I think there we really need to use the Agile toolbox uh, but of course, then have the lean together with us. But but here we are struggling a lot. But we have also come really far, I think. And what what we did in our organization was that we looked at our modern system that we are so proud of, uh, which has enabled Scania with a great success for a long time. And I think the principles for the modular system is that you should have standardized interfaces, same need, identical solution, and well-balanced performance steps. But maybe we are missing or it's not written like the unique customer need and how can we tailor, tailor made the solutions? And, and we really wanted to see, can we do that for our applications as well? Can they be 
tailor made but still have like standardized interfaces and identical solutions. Uh, and to move towards that, we have done something that we call technical fit. And this is a very messy picture. It's a lot of details, but what we actually do is that we measure or work with data and evaluate how is our, our systems well-being and what is the landscape of it. So here you can see like the landscape of our systems where we have measured continuously integration, test maturity, we have monitoring and logging, we had modular architecture, infrastructure status, security, integration status, uh, performance status, and also code quality. And if, if the map is really, really yellow or orange, then we need to be aware of that the possibility to do changes and the pace of being able to do changes is really, really low. Uh, and that means that our modular system is maybe not that modular. Uh, so this is a way that we have adapted the modular system, but try to use it within uh, software, uh, software uh, uh, engineering management to also improve our uh, ecosystem. Great. And the next OCR that we have is the operational excellence. And maybe this doesn't sound so fun, but it's also really important, especially today when security is a hot topic. Uh, and what we want to do is that we always want to be available, secure, safe and sustainable and compliant. And that we should keep IT services and business applications should keep Scania and our customers rolling. And that has really been important during the pandemic, even though we have not been able to go to our offices, we have still provided our system so we could be able to sell, sell our products. And we also have a lot of focus on delivering green IT, so we actually have like a group that are driving that and also are greening with IT to be more sust uh, sustainable. Uh, but I also would like to take in another example from our, our uh, department on how do we uh, do this operational excellence and also together with the ones stating the business goals and the directions. Uh, so we looked at the, the four uh, directions that, that Scania has and we said that Okay, we have a need of adapt more quickly, we need to deliver what the customer needs and we also need to motivate our people. And this was something that we're struggling with because we felt the feeling was that we never deliver. And we can't adapt and we have people that are not that motivated. So we went back to our uh, the Scania way again and looked at that. Uh, and see what we could use, but we also felt that there were a lot some things missing, like the normal situation, what is the normal situation and how can we create awareness of that? And, and is it output that we need or is it outcome? Um, so what we did was that we faced our challenges and as you can see, we had challenges with everything and we had challenges with our products. Uh, we had challenges with our technology, the organization, the mindset, the people, not the people as individuals, more of on how to motivate them to go the right direction or to, to be the direction for what we are doing. And also we had a lot of messy processes and misunderstandings. And, but I think the picture really describes the challenge that we had, like we had uh, islands of agile way of working, but we didn't have like any scaling or any transparency between us. And that was something that we wanted to improve to be more excellent in our operational uh, uh, journey. So to increase the transparency and understanding, we established like a journey management uh, framework. Uh, inspired by SAFE, so we didn't have the SAFE roles and we didn't take the whole framework of SAFE. And with Journey, we looked at uh, the behaviors of our users and then we divided the organization in different type of journeys. 
Uh, and we also did this to maybe remove the bureaucracy uh, and also remove the responsibility from the line organization because today uh, the line organization is really strong at Scania but as Marie mentioned before we wanted it to be more team based and have the team to be more autonomous uh, and driven according to what where we were heading. So this was a model that we set up. Uh, uh, to be able to scale and with scaling that is more of like create understanding and awareness of the direction. Uh, and then we needed to go back and then we started to say that we need to really focus on what and how principles. Like we need to give the direction and what goes to achieve, but then the how is really steered by the teams. Mm. And we still had like a lot of traditional way of, of have uh, perspectives. So we really needed to emphasize, especially for our us managers, that we needed to decide on the direction and be clear with that, but then let the teams decide on how to get there and not, not uh, steer that. And also give the team an end-to-end -end responsibility for the business goals. Uh, and also make sure that they could launch regularly and also follow up on the impact, not on the uh, tasks, uh, so to speak. <clears throat> and again, maybe this is not, not uh, new for you, but it's something that we struggle with a lot. So we have the traditional way of thinking, like we discuss initiatives or feature to release, but we miss like the discussion on business value. Why are we providing them? And then we also follow up on deliveries and, and talked about resources uh, divided on different tasks. Um, and then also the prioritizations from progress and programs and projects. And I think this is something we struggle with because Scania has a very strong hardware organization where we deliver our uh, trucks or buses. And, and their uh, sprints or iterations are much longer and have quite hard deadlines due to the hardware uh, development. So that's something that we struggle with. But we wanted to emphasize a new approach. So we set up like, a, uh, we call it big room planning, but uh, a discussion or a meeting where we had the whole organization set the priorities uh, linked to business value. And then also talk about the business impact for the team uh, and also have the backlogs uh, connected to that, but also have the ambitions to keep the team so stable as possible, because if the team changes a lot, then, then the, the delivery or the pace of deliveries will be much lower in the end. And then also have objectives that were transparent uh, for everyone, but don't steer on the actions to get there. Uh, and then, of course, the basics for everything is to have these team-based uh, team based uh, organization and we also have like a model there but first we went to our thinking model but we felt like this doesn't help us that much so we actually maybe didn't remove it but we did our own model uh, that we call uh, that where we focused on uh, what do we want to achieve uh, the product our tasks and goals uh, we also talked about how do you want to organize within the team and also how do we interact with each other and I think to be able to have transparency and direction and have a why uh, this needs to be in place uh, for the teams to be able to go to, towards the direction that you want to have and with uh, these areas we have like different uh, uh, things or, or activities that we need to work on. Uh, so this is uh, some kind of mapping on what happens within the team and, and how do we uh, work with those things. And the blue ones are based on our, our uh, uh, leader principles, but we also have taken a lot of inspiration from Victor Sesson in his team dynamics work. Uh, so this is our PPP model that the team use to be able to handle the team dynamics. <clears throat> and having this, we felt like we could adapt quickly. We delivered much more of what the customer needed, and we also could have more motivated people. 
And then to be emphasized the how is that the ambitions was to, to get more autonomy and alignment and talk about the problem. What, what do we need to solve, not how do we need to solve it. That was up to the teams. Over to you, Marie. Yes, uh, for a little summary. Um, um, and maybe we can uh, just go through uh, the different uh, areas we have. Uh, so when scaling, for example, uh, uh, we have uh, some challenges. We, we, we focus on process and not team and people. Um, enabling structures are not in place. Uh, for example, uh, the decision structure. Uh, we have uh, the same bureaucracy, uh, the hierarchical levels uh, that we need to work on. Um, and incorporate learning and innovation in our daily work is, uh, is really hard. Uh, it's separate islands. Um, and we have still a structural and cultural misfit when the system in, is not tailored uh, to be agile yet. So we need a lot of, um, uh, we need a, um, a lot of collaboration with different areas to actually, um, uh, to create these enabling structures instead uh, to uh, tweak the system to be able to work uh, in a new way. So the system is really, uh, um, the system change is really, really necessary here. Uh, and we need also to work really close with all the uh, departments that are <clears throat> creating these kinds of structures, for example, uh, finance or HR or uh, other areas within the organization. We see we have uh, uh, this kind of uh, uh, structural and cultural uh, misfits in the organization. Um, but um, having this uh, lean foundation in the organization, organization and have it within our, our genes uh, with the uh, continuous improvement. Uh, and then adding on the agile mindset uh, and then the tools to fit, um, uh, fit this added way of thinking is, um, is really a good, uh, a good match only if we, we know when to use what. Um, want to add anything, Carolina? Yeah, I did an extra picture. Ah, great. <laughs> I just want to say that uh, from my perspective, I'm working in different organizations here at Scania. Uh, we started for like six years ago with doing agile, like changing priorities, using the agile methods and having iterations. But I think we are there. So we have starting to be agile instead of just doing agile. And together with our uh, foundation, the house, I think it's really strong tools to be able to be successful and also have uh, people being uh, leading themselves instead of having a lot of managers telling everyone to do. So I'm, that's something that I'm really proud of and, and feel like we are. Uh, and, and since we work at Scania, we always look for deviations and improvements. So I, I'm like have that in my backbone. So I, I, I won't say that we are good, but we are getting better and better at combining this and that I'm uh, proud of. And then we can also see that the magic happens. Yes. And that was everything. <laughs> I hope you're still awake. <laughs> yeah, no, great. I think this was very interesting uh, learning and, and I really like your last slide there. Uh, but we have um, some questions probably. Uh, we have a few in the, um, in the chat and people can also ask questions. Uh, but I can read one. Um, it's about servant leadership. Uh, I'm really curious about servant leadership. How did you implement the new leadership philosophy? Uh, that was really a, a quite fun journey, actually. Uh, it was, we have been 
uh, we had been working with the servant leadership or uh, agile. We were working with agile methods for a while at Scania IT. And uh, the management team actually thought that we were um, not gaining what we wanted to, to gain with the, with the agile. Uh, so they wanted to change the or see what we needed to do with the leadership. So they sent out a questionnaire actually to the whole organization asking for help. Uh, how can you help us with um, what the next kind of leadership, what, what capability? capabilities do we need? So you could actually apply to this in the organization. Uh, and they created a group which uh, worked with this for a while. And what they came up with was, was that uh, the people in the organization didn't feel that they could um, actually um, uh, have, the, have a say in what uh, in things that matters to them. Uh, I mean, taking the decisions and so on, they were not involved in the decisions. Uh, so these were uh, something that created this kind of, um, um, what do I say, um, the servant leadership uh, manifesto that we have today, um, to have this kind of engagement and to make people accountable and, uh, and autonomy um, and let them decide uh, about things that matters. Uh, so they actually, um, this group actually provided them with a, um, the suggestion of the servant leadership and uh, we started to create that. And now it's actually within the, the um, uh, IT strategy and we follow it up every quarter um, as an OKR. So we measure the servant leadership level in the organization. Uh, so it's, it's been a really uh, great journey actually. And I can also add from a manager perspective that I think it's really important that the managers are aware and also want to adapt and change because mm -hmm. your role will not be as it has been. You have to be much more open than maybe not in control. And maybe also, uh, I think, be aware of that maybe the manager will be less important when having the servant leadership. And it's actually about letting people grow and and lead themselves and help each other. And mm. so I think that's like uh, an important journey to do as well. And, and I also think in the beginning, we heard a lot like, well, if it's servant leadership, I will just back off and let everybody do what they want. And that's not servant leadership. The servant leadership is a lot to be, to adapt to the situation and help your uh, teams or team members uh, in what they need without maybe uh, point out what to do. Uh, so it, it's really important to adapt your leadership and maybe be assertive when needed, but also step back when you don't need to be assertive and don't have like the manager uh, position, more be a leader and coach when needed. Mm. And that is a, a challenge, I think, for a lot since we are maybe competitive people that wants to be the best then, that can be a challenge to like step back. <laughs> yeah, we also have this in the company. I think that this is the way we uh, work with, uh, we work with management maybe instead of uh, leadership in some areas. And, mm -hmm. and this is a way of, of thinking and acting. And this is something that we need to help. Uh, it's a mindset shift that we need uh, help with. It's hard to do it alone. So we took a lot of help uh, uh, in this journey, uh, Adele People and Pia Maria was was helping us a lot, and um, we we also all now when we are um, uh, we are still we are still on a journey, of course. Uh, so we still have these kinds of trainings in the organization, the other people trainings, and they are really really helping us uh, getting to the next stage, the next level of the. Uh, servant leadership. Great, thank you. Uh, do you still have the weekly dependency that bottleneck pulse meetings across Scania IT on the PM management level? No, we don't have our uh, project organization anymore. We no. focus on team a team based organization. So, no. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, 
uh, how do you cope with the time zone challenges for teamwork mm. across 100 countries? I think uh, Scania has, has the perspective of always have a lot of freedom for our dealer and distributors. Mm. So I think um, we have the benefit, but it can also be a challenge that we have divided work according to the time zones. We don't have that many distributed teams across, across uh, time zones, but I know that the POs, for example, the product owners, they struggle sometimes because China is our most valuable strategic area and, and area to grow in. And that means that they have to work China hours. So uh, no great solution for that. Please let us know if you have a better one or, or a good one. But it is a struggle. And then we have a question. Have the organization been flattened out during the six years as a result of Agile? Mm, I think, um, mm, let's say, not the whole Scania. We st still have a quite uh, strong line management within the product development or, or like our distributor and, and dealers are still maybe in a lean <laughs> lean world and have and not that agile but I think within IT yes mm. but we also need to meet them the other parts of Scania so sometimes I know that I have to go in and play the manager for a bit just to help my team mm. but uh, to, to answer for the whole Scania I say no <laughs> And maybe our export need to be educated much more in how to be agile. I think that's a big, and also that we are owned by Volkswagen really mm. makes the manager role strong sometimes. Mm. Yeah. And it's also hard when you, um, for, for a big part of, the, of Scania, uh, we are now um, doing safe uh, implementation or safe uh, inspired uh, implementations and that will be uh, of course um, uh, hard to do I mean we do it in a really big scale uh, so it's hard to do that and at the same time work with the um, organization I think that will be the next step uh, so uh, finding out what we need in in terms of uh, um how we work with uh, this new structure i think will help us a lot to to flatten the organization because we don't we don't need all the levels then but still still now it's it's like uh, a lot like before i think great uh, you were talking about separate islands working at agile but not the whole organization do you have mm. any suggestions of how to get these agile islands to become an agile organization? I think yeah, setting like the OKRs that we have shown is a good way, but also a lot about implementing servant leadership and, and as a start. Uh, and then also like don't force the whole organization to transform at the same time, like find good example and improve that and, and educate, educate, educate. And also be aware of that you start with a doing, but then your mind has to shift. So it's, it's like start with a doing, but then see you really have to transform to being. And I think that is a big challenge. But look at the good examples, try to gain, gain from that. Uh, and don't do everything at the same time, because then you will get stuck. stuck. Um, and maybe also like our R&D organization has done, they added safe just yes, to be able to have some kind of security to do a transformation. So, uh, yeah. But the, uh, as Carolina said, the best thing is to start small with small experiments and do it locally so you can, you can see how it works. But it's also all about the mindset that as mm. you as a manager or a leader. Mm -hmm. And another question, how is the servant leadership working globally? We can find it challenging mm -hmm. in some cultures. Mm -hmm. I think uh, a bit the same answer here. Find, have your manifesto and, and talk about that a lot. Educate and maybe also 
I have done that with my team members from other cultures that I measure them on how servant they are. Uh, because in some cultures, they, they, it may be more important to have like an important role or be a manager and have power. But if you start measuring on how servant are you, maybe that can shift the mind on, on that person. But of course, it is a challenge and we also have uh, struggles sometimes. But I think like uh, it needs to be a commit from the whole organization that we, it is servant leadership that we want to have. And then all managers or leaders need to be aware of that and also help each other uh, when coming from other cultures. Mm. Mm. Right. Um, we are, have a follow-up question. So how do you manage the bottlenecks mm. across teams? Uh, it is a struggle, I won't lie. Uh, I, I know that maybe my team member, Philip is here and he is working a lot with our infrastructure that has a lot of bottlenecks from our perspective. But I think what we did, that's why we implemented this kind of journey, journey framework uh, to be able to like visualize the direction and also the objectives on where we are heading. But then also I think we have worked a lot in like trying to build uh, networks like competence networks and network over the organization and try to enable that to help people yes reach out the hand or ping you on teams so that's that's i think that is what we do uh, networks and also being very transparent and clear with with the objectives for everyone mm. Mm. Then one more question. What is the challenge in scaling in, Ad in Scania? Everything, I think. No, and also <laughs> because... the challenge, like, yeah. Do we need to scale or why do we need to scale? I think that's important, yeah. not just to do it. Yeah. But also as the, the organization uh, not, is, is not yet uh, fit for this kind of work. So we actually need to um, fit the organization to work like this. And, uh, and uh, I think that's the hard part uh, because uh, scaling when uh, the organization is uh, not really uh, set yet, then, it, then it's really, really hard. Mm. Uh, but we're doing it in parallel. So mm. hopefully, uh, we will meet, they will meet somewhere. Mm. But scaling without autonomous team, then, then what are you actually scaling? Yeah. Or are you just adding a framework? So mm. yes, that can be good to think about. Yeah. yeah, the team and the leadership are the most important mm. thing to start with, uh, mm. to have that in place. Yeah, I agree. And one last question. Yes. You mentioned that continuous learning is important. How does your learning and development team support you in the journey? Um, as we, we have a, a big organization working with, uh, uh, with learning, uh, our academy, uh, and they are really, um, I think, in the forefront what, when it comes to, to learning um and helping us with the uh, the tools for it um so uh, having uh, linkedin learning and and be able to to just connect and uh, have the learning whenever you want to uh, on demand uh, the, um, so i think that's uh, uh that's good even though they might be uh, a little bit uh, also connecting with uh, with agile uh, and this uh, way of working, uh, but um, yeah, I forgot what to say. Carolina, help me out. Yeah, but I can also say that don't rely on your uh, learning and development team to support you. Like, what can you do yourself? Uh, we have worked a lot with networks. Uh, we are, oh, if you have somebody that's really good in something, let th that person coach the other ones to, to grow. Uh, so, so uh, I think like start with yourself uh, and then see what you need from them, because it, they are mm. also in like a complex environment. It's not as it was before. Um, 
And I see that a lot of my teams, they do learnings through the retros, they do learnings through each other. They have like creative Fridays mm. where they do learnings together. So maybe like, oh, yeah, maybe a learning and development team is more of providing tools. <clears throat> Yeah, and, and also uh, what we see in the organization is that we might not have uh, that uh, the time uh, for learning. So that I think is a big challenge that we put it on the on the map. And as Carolina said, it's much easier in an um, agile team or uh, working with team based organization because then it's built in within our uh, within our ways of working. Mm -hmm. uh, but other struggles with the struggle with having this kind of time for learning, even though we have um, our academy provides us with everything we need, then uh, it's hard to actually take the time. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, I think we will need to round up there. Um, I just want to say thank you to Marie and Carolina. It's been a really interesting story you have told. Um, and if you see in the chat, uh, a lot of positive feedback also. So I think we will round up here today and say thank you to everyone for joining us. And thank you everyone for listening. Thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.